created conscience is very different. According to the opinion of some theologians, and I was talking about people who are confused, the function of thought has been reduced, at least a certain period of the past. The same level of case for general moral norms, the usual case is the life of the person. But these norms, they continue, cannot be expected to perceive in respect of the individual or that the person who needs this individuality. Well, such norms might somehow be useful for an assessment of the situation. You cannot replace individual personal decisions on how to act in particular cases. The critique already mentioned the true understanding of human nature and of its supports in the moral life has even led certain authors to state that these norms are not so much by an objective material conscience, they are perspective, just by thinking of the good over his personal and social life. It's a more of diet, it's not a rule. The authors also stress the complexity typical of the thought of conscience, complexity profoundly related to the whole sphere of psychology and emotions, and the numerous influences exerted by people's social and cultural life. On the other hand, they give maximum attention to the value of conscience, because the council itself is defined as defines the category of man where he is alone with God, his voice echoes within him. This voice, it said, is bound not so much to take this observance of the universal norms as to be created for responsible acceptance of official tasks trusted in by God. And there is not to emphasize the creative desire of conscience should all those no longer call us actions about those prior decisions. Will they make the decisions put upon autonomously and be able to attain more mature? So even hold this process mature and inhibited by the excessively categorical position of that which is most your many moral questions. Then the church's interventions are the cause of necessary conflicts of conscience. Okay, let's break this apart. <laughs> So, what you'll find in a lot of these things is people overemphasize particular aspects of truth, or ignore other aspects, cut parts out. And so the thing is, there are particular things here that are true, that are applied badly or, or overemphasized. And so what they want to emphasize is that mind is complicated. And the individual person has the duty to make free decisions. To choose right and wrong, to decide to do that. All that's true. What they're saying here is the conscience isn't so much saying what to do with the situation. It's more of it these general guidelines and boundaries I have that with my will, with my freedom, choose how to apply. So for example, the conscience might tell me, love my name. I have to decide, does that mean sleep with my girlfriend or not? Yeah. So love my neighbor. Um, and so what they're saying is, so there is kind of guidelines we give by the conscience, but to concrete individual particular action. That has to be a form of freedom, has to be a form of decisions. What the church would say is the conscience acts, acts like a rule. With a particular measure in the line, you could say, this is a distance. So I go, well, I'm going to measure something here. I can tell you exactly my feet, how big it is, how tall it is, how far apart from the else. Now use something that's going to be an objective standard, so I can measure those steps. The church is saying is that my objective standard is based upon the will of God and the will of God. I want to say is that my conscience, what it's doing is I'm saying, I'm comparing, I'm judging, is my action that I'm proposing, does it conform to God's will and God's law or not? That's what the conscience is. This is what I'm saying, the conscience is this indication to follow God's will, and I get to decide for myself what that means for your life. 
In other words, there's no cause. And it's, again, it sounds very, very nice. It sounds, it sounds it kind of smart. But it goes back down to the whole point of the last time. It goes back to the point. As soon as you say, I can do what I want, because I'm free, because I, I am. And what they emphasize is my con, I have to follow my conscience. My conscience says, I can do this. My conscience says, it's okay for me to contraceptive or to steal, or to lie in this case. <coughs> and therefore, if all my conscience, I am doing the right thing. The problem is, they have divorced it from objective reality. They have divorced anything outside of myself, when I'm judging them is really, what do I feel like doing? And if I can find a good reason, an excuse, a good, a good, a good intention for why I'm going to do it, and all of a sudden, my conscience will tell me it's okay because, in my case, this is the more loving and this easier this is ever it might be. And depending on the person, it might have someone totally fool themselves or someone less fool themselves. But, but that's what we're talking about. You have this creative conscience, which kind of gives indication, but then it can be a little tired. It's always people with underdeveloped. <laughs> yeah, which their conscience isn't even really there, I guess. They're ignoring it. <clears throat> like, it's not developed, so exactly. it's not telling them, hey, don't do this. Well, or if it is, then they're just to ignore it because their emotions are set to it. Yeah. And they're being told it's okay because I have a reason or the, the church will always tell us you follow your conscience. Make sure your conscience is full of right. And your conscience isn't very loud. You don't feel it. Right. But your emotions are always like screaming at you. Yeah. At the top of their lungs. And so you form your conscience, we have to make sure that that's formed correctly. Um, the same way they go to measure things to make sure the ruler uses a good one. The ruler uses a bad ruler, not very helpful. It says that the foot seven inches, good luck in how you can do it. Number 56. In order to justify this position, some authors have believed that double stance in moral truth. Beyond the doctrine of the abstract line, one would have to acknowledge the priority of a certain more concrete and sensitive consideration. In other words, there's different kinds of truth, they would say. Truth and concrete truth. So you have the abstract truth, yes, in the abstract, thou shalt not steal, maybe in the concrete. You can if you do the reason. Now, if you take account of circumstances and situation, they generally be the basis of certain exceptions to general rule. That's what they want to do in practice, and the conscience was qualified as evil, intrinsically by the moral law. <coughs> so, well, yes, general one should steal, but in my case, I really want that phone and so on steal. In my case, it is doing a lot of good because I use that phone to do great good for, for, for the world and for those around me, and therefore, it's much better I have it. So I'm going to steal that phone. <laughs> and therefore, yeah, general one's going to steal, but in my case, it's okay. So I'm not going to get phone again? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Sure. <laughs> Number 57. <laughs> separation, even opposition. Thus established in some cases the teaching of the precept, thou in general, and the normal of the individual conscience, which would in fact make the final decision of what is good and what is evil. On this basis, so this language sounds familiar to you, one attempt, attempt is made at the difference that's over the path to resolution, commonly teaching the magisterium. This way, created from doing according to which moral conscience is not all applied in every case, particularly in the precept. Have you ever heard of that term before? Were you being pastoral? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes back, it's using that sense. Pastoral meaning, well, in your case, what had you said? Yeah. It goes back to the same problem, the same way of understanding the truth. Either there's an objective standard I have to conform to, or I'm wrong, I'm mad, and we can live with them saying it. Or I do what I want, and 
there are, I, I accept in the theory these more principles, but in reality they differ from me. And so I, mean, I know that in the theory you would say don't come for Shep, but how many pastoral in your case you can go and do that? What is the hermeneutic? Uh, the way to interpret uh, and, and to uh, you want to interpret something. So your rubric interpretation is hermeneutic. So the way you understand and uh, interpret these, these laws. It's Greek. It's Greek. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, get to realize the approaches for the challenge of the very identity, the moral conscience. You know, the moral conscience simply tells me to do what I want to do. How is it helping me to do like that? One of the clarification earlier with regard to relationship of truth between the law makes it possible to discern about this way of understanding the conscience. Right? It, going back to earlier last time, freedom is there, the purpose of letting me do what's right for me. The law is there to make me free. Freedom is there to help me follow Christ. The law is there to make me like Christ himself. There's a purpose, a boundary, there's a, there's a reason these things exist. And it's not there simply to you by one another. It's to use, make me like God. And if that is not kept in my forefront of my mind, if my sense of conscience is there to do what I want with it, simply to make me feel about myself, not guilty about myself, my measuring line, the road is not measuring anything. And therefore, my conscience will let me be to replace it. Because I have broken it, well, not for me. I would say that, that uh, measuring is not me, my action compared to God, and his, and his law is witness. But the action is compared to my emotions, compared to my mind. Don't do that. <laughs> the judgment of conscience. The text for the letter of the Romans has helped us grasp the essence of the natural law. Also indicates the biblical understanding of conscience. Especially, Specifically, the connection with the law. The Gentiles who have not the law do by nature what the law requires. They are all to themselves, even though they have to have the law. They show what the law requires within their hearts, but their conscience also witnesses the conflicting thoughts, accusing crimes, excuse them. Let's take a part for a minute. So the law in this case means the Torah, the Jewish law. The Gentiles don't have the Jewish law, do by nature the law requires. So the, the Jewish law the commandments, they do that knowing in their hearts, don't steal, don't, don't, don't lie, don't kill. They're law to themselves. They're following the law's command, they're following the law's ask for, even though they haven't received their revelation. They show the law requires, the Torah requires in their hearts. And their conscience also bears witness. So they had this natural part of themselves that says, don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie. And their own conscience says, um, I've done the right thing, you're going to fail to do the right thing. That's what Paul said. The court of the same Paul, conscience in a certain sense confronts men with the law, with God's law, with God's truth. And that's been the witness for man. A witness, someone who's watched him in his life, someone who's been there as his chosen things. I was of faithfulness or unfaithfulness with regard to the law. Of an essential moral rectitude of equity, the sin or to her justice. Conscience is the only witness. This all takes place in the heart of the person that is hidden on some eyes of the side. Conscience makes a witness to only the person himself. And her only person himself knows what his own response is that the voice of conscience. So conscience is there, recognizes what my heart is. Is my heart turned toward God away from God? And that the voice of my conscience tells me we're turned toward God or turned away from God. Either what I have done or what I'm thinking about doing and then going to do it. If I turn toward God away from God, and that, that witness is there on the inside of myself. 
The importance of this interior dialogue with Adam and himself, which is why it's often depicted as Lagos and Eons, but again, you get too, uh, too liberal with that. Can ever adequately appreciate it. But this also is a dialogue of man with God, the author of the law, a memorial in the compiling of the man. Because of the end, it's bringing you toward God away from him. What he listens to in the end it is God is the objective truly of all. We're being told. They bond their teacher to conscience like God's herald, the messenger. It does not command that he has authority. Does command do this, don't do that, not by its own. The command is coming from God's authority. Outside of that, it's beyond that, it's bigger than that. Like a herald who proclaims the evil of the king. And this is why confidence has a binding force. So I know that in my heart, I should do this, should do that, I need to follow that. Because that, that's how I follow the Lord. Thus it can be said that conscience or witness demands are acting directly in himself. Together with this, he before him, constitutes of God to himself, whose voice and judgment are in the depths of man's soul, calling him strongly and sweetly. This is a reference to the scriptures that the Holy Spirit blows strongly and sweetly. Obedience. Point to Aaron, swap to Moral conscience does not close man with an insurmountable kind of felicity. It opens it up to the call of the wisdom of God. In this, not anything else, I have to the entire meaning of moral conscience. It being the place, sacred place where God speaks to man. What gives conscience the right to be obeyed is not that in myself saying, What should I do today? Today I feel like doing this or doing that, and this would be the truth. This is what some people were saying, right? This is this creative conscience. What gives my conscience the duty is that it is a relationship to God. Where I say, Am I following God, which is my end and my goal, or not following? And so even though it is this interior gaze of my own heart, my life, it begins first with the gaze of God. And the recognition of who God is what God has for And the reason why I must obey my conscience is because it tells me I follow it on God. And clearly I can't knowingly not follow God. But I must, the best I can, knowingly follow God and do what he asks. And so conscience that place in my heart where I say, this is how I follow God or not God. And that's why I have to obey this. Does that make sense? If you're not. Say that Paul does not merely acknowledge the past conscious access in us, he also reveals the way in which conscience forms a function. He speaks of conflicting thoughts, which accuse or excuse the Gentile for their behavior. The term conflicting thoughts clarifies the precise nature of the conscience. It is a moral judgment, but man is actions. A judgment of either acquittal or incarnation, according to those human acts are authority or not the law of God in their heart. This is good as a by doing God's will or God's will. Right? The following this right or doing this evil. In the same text, the apostle really speaks to general actions. The judgment of their author at the moment when that judgment would potentially be, be, be made. This will take place in that day when according to my gospel, God of the secret of men by Christ Jesus. The judgment of conscience is a practical judgment. It's not, it's not a theoretical thing, it's not an abstract thing, it's to do with the something that wanted to do an actual behavior. It's a little practical, a little practice. A judgment which makes known what man must do and must not do. For success is an act already done by him. A judgment which applies to the concrete situation, the rational conviction that one must love and do good and never evil. The first principle of practical reason is a part of natural law, because it constitutes the very foundation of natural law. Do good and evil. And thus to express it that the moral insight of good and evil, the reflection of God's great wisdom, which is like a perishable spark, a scintilla, 
shines the heart of every man. Who have the soul, spark of the soul. Uh, whereas the next rule is supposed to be objective, universal demands of the law of good. Conduct applies to the application of the law in a particular case. It's the application of natural law and then going to the individual, a sign that the was good for this particular situation. Conduct formulates moral obligation by the natural law. It's the obligation to do with the individual the workings of his conscience knows to be good. He is called to do here or now. Universality of the law is obligation or knowledge of Christ. We just establish the law's application in the concrete circumstances. The judgment of the conscience states, in an ultimate way, with a certain particular kind of behavior and conformity to the law, it formulates the approximate nature nor the morality of technology now, but find the objective law to your case. So, this is what the Pope's talking about. So, we have as part of our nature, as part of what we are as human beings, this law of reason, this natural law, which says where our goal is, what we do, don't kill, don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie. But because of the fact that life is complicated, we all need to know how to live that out in the real circumstances. So when somebody is attacking me, what do I do? When I'm tempted to steal because I'm hungry, what do I do? When I'm tempted to lie because it's easy, what do I do? For this I have my functions, which helps me to say here and now, in this particular case, the real thing in front of me. How do I take these laws that I know, which again, reflect on who God is, and live them out today? That is the relationship. That is how. And so it's true, like some people were saying, that there is this complex moral life, this complicated principles. So what I had was my conscience who judges this individual action in the light of what I know to be true and what I know so I have this natural law in my heart, as well as revealed law of reason, and my conscience tells me the day, this moment, do I do good or have I been good in the past? Make sense? Number six. Like the natural law itself, or practical knowledge, the judgment of conscience also has comparative character. Man must act in accordance with it. So because I'm being told by conscience, do this now, this is what is right to do now, today, if I disobey that, I'm sinning. Because conscience says, this is what I should do. If man acts against his judgment, or in a case where he lacks certainty about why he's supposed to learn to act, who performs that act, he stands condemned by the conscience of possible more personal morality. My conscience says, do this, and I say, I don't want to do it. My conscience says, doing this could be a, a bad thing, I don't care. Well, that very, that's very in my own self, my own heart, I'm condemning. And I'll say, no, you're wrong, because I was told to do this, and I don't want to do this, and you do it. The conscience itself moved by conscience. The dignity of this rational form, this place in my, in my mind, which I could debate this happen, and the authority of its voice and judgments derive from the truth of the moral of me, which is called listen to and express. What makes this be imperative and important to listen to is because it's telling the truth about what's good about it. The 
This truth indicated by the divine law, universal objective and moral morality. Right, it's above the natural law, there is God's law. Because this has to express to the beings and causes something to apply that now. So the reason why this becomes that important to follow is it has to lead back to God. How to follow it and like it, how to obey it, how to listen to it. The judgment of conscience is not established in law, rather, it exists through the authority of the natural law and the practical reason of the supreme good. The practice the human person perceives is the matter that he accepts. So it's not created in these rules. Let's say, do this because this is the rule for you, but say, this is how you do the sound. It's bringing you back and obey God and come by God and speak God and know it. Congress is not the independent and conclusive capacity to decide us for the receiver. Rather, it's a kind of the principle of obedience. He said these, he said these, they have to ignore the establishing conditions corresponding to the citizens, to the command and prohibition of the basis of human behavior. I'm obeying God's law, do what God asks The truth about moral good, the truth declared for all reason, is practically and completely recognized with their own conscience, which makes one take responsibility for good or evil for what is done. If a man is evil, he does not his conscience remains within him as a witness to the universal truth and good. Thus, the malice of his particular choice, I feel guilty. I say, oops, I should have done that. Which is done different. But the verdict of conscience also remains in him as a pledge of the hope and mercy of God. But by witness to evil, he has done also reminds him of his need. And the humble God's grace has forgiven us to do good for the virtue of constant. So because I believe and recognize it, there's hope that I can change and back to God and repent and be saved. But if knowing that evil and I care of evil, I can't change. I change. That's quite the practical judgment of conscience, imposing a person obligation for a man. This lengthy freedom of truth is my manifest. Precisely for this reason, conscience expresses itself in acts of judgment. About the truth about the good, non arbitrary decisions. If it was an arbitrary, they had to feel like this. There's nothing to do with truth, we'll be back to natural law, we'll be back to ourselves. We'll only be back to myself, to my feelings, my desires. And so that, that was this link to the truth, conscience would, would, would do nothing, would be useless. <coughs> The maturity and responsibility of these judgments, when I said uh, the maturity of the visual who makes them, they're subject, are measured by the liberation of conscience from objective truth. I'm not for sure that I have nothing else to tell them to do. In favor of that autonomy of personal decisions, but contrary to the search for truth, that I myself be guided by the truth in one's actions. So I'm basically mature, mature, mature Christian. A wise person is not that I am treating all outside forces or what I don't know what to do. Because I live in the truth and follow God. God is truth. And so the same with true wisdom is that in making up a truth for myself and being removed from anything that God gives me. I think kind of morality and doing right and wrong, you're removed from what God is and what God is. So someone tells you, well, I'm sure it's not even listening listen to those old commandments that means that they are not the truth. They are in the truth, living from the sun. Right, does all this make sense? Number 62. Seeking what is true. Conscience, as a human judgment of that, is not exactly the possibility of error. But because it's in my mind, I can make mistakes. I can think something is good when it's not, something is bad when it's not. It's not. As the council puts it, not unfrequently conscience being mistaken as all of its deliverance. Something's not my fault, something I can't work out. But it's not that account for his dignity. It's not going be said that a man shows little concern or seeking what is true and good. And cost becomes gradually less blind and accustomed to sin. 
So if I made a mistake doing the best I can, there's still good value to help me to do the ball well. So even my mistake is worth more supposed to do your best. If I just don't give a darn, I don't care, we'll stop leaving me to God and it will actually do harm. It will actually, my conscience will lead me down the right path. Because I've got to twist me. In these brief words, the church, the council sums up the dogma of the church and the center is set up with our erroneous conscience. So, a conscience that's an error. Conscience has some to do with an error from our fault or error that we can't help. I help it, so it's still a good thing. If I can't help it, then it's 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 not so. So in order to have a good conscience, I like the correct conscience, a man must seek the truth and must make judgments in accordance with the same truth. And if you know what's good and what's true, we must follow that. And the apostle Paul said the conscience must be confirmed by the Holy Spirit. It must be clear. We must not practice coming into happen with God's work. If you have it to the point of sight. There's openly stated the truth. On the other hand, the apostle warns Christians, not be conformed to this world. Don't make your judgments based on what the world says. To be transformed by the rule of your mind. You may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Paul's admonition is just to be watchful. More than that, the judgments of our conscience, the possibility of error is always present. Conscience is not an infallible judge, it's a human judgment. It can make mistakes. <coughs> However, error of conscience can be resolved in this living place. It was with the subject is not aware, which is able to overcome by himself. The council reminded us that in this case, the visual evidence is not comfortable. Conscious not is distinctive, but even when it directs us to act with without conformity with the actual order. It still speaks in the name of that truth about the good, which speaks out of this call of seek sincerely. In other words, if to no fault of my I made a serious mistake about what's true. I am a pagan, I, I think that Christianity is false, but it truly is true. Could I, believing that, that, pagan, that Christianity is false, be a good person and all my life is false? No. If, if, if I truly know both my own, believe that, that Christianity is a false religion, I can't join it just to make my, my husband happy, my wife happy, my kids happy. I've been doing the wrong thing. Now, if I do think it's true, or if I'm on the cues, I have the obligation to, to educate myself, warn myself, obviously. But even if I make a mistake, the Lord is still going to say, well, you do, you do what you could to follow. And so the pagan who thinks he's doing the right thing, that's he knows how. He'll you know, follow his own. The Lord is going to be more pleased with him to, to do the right thing, the right thing, maybe to say the right thing, if he were to lie to God, lie to his family, and pretend something which he believes is false. It's interesting. <laughs> because the fact is that he's wrong. There's never going to be made. But he's still doing his best to seek the truth. Now, um, somebody who again doesn't care, or doesn't, isn't trying to do the right thing, isn't trying to find the right way, isn't trying to know the Lord's will. They're not meant to leave her. They're willfully leave her, and therefore they're comfortable for those things. They are at fault for those things. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In any event, it's always the truth for the idea of conscience to rise. In the case of the correct conscience, especially the objective truth of a man, of, that's the honor of something that is true or false, no matter what man says or the same. In the case of the erroneous conscience, especially what man mistakenly, subjectively considers to be true. Doing my best to get things say. It is never acceptable to confuse subjective error with moral good, the objective truth, rational, close to man, which is 
or to make the moral value of the act perform rationally opposed to the nature of the act. If you make our conscience, put the moral act that the act perform by their own conscience. So, just because I do the best I can wrong, doesn't make any less wrong. I'm still wrong. Now, I'm not at fault for that. I am still wrong for that. So a doctor who thinks he's giving his patient good medicine and giving them poison, not be at fault for that. Doesn't make medicine good. A doctor who's convinced that the spirit of power on someone's eyes, that's what he's still talking about in his medical school, which will cure the blindness of old families, that's happened before in the past. That's making the medicine. And, and so there's a difference between objective truth and a subjective truth that we're the best of us for the sake of God. God is for God, God is to be followed, God is for true. But the doctor is doing his best, even if he's making a mistake, is that what's wrong? But if he works the doctor, or works literally think that it's a good thing and not do it, it's because he wants to, he's bad at something. If he thinks, oh, I don't care what this person wants, I'm not going to hold the medicine, even if it's bad medicine, he's still going to be black, even though he's wrong. Does that make sense? Yes. It is possible that evil done when they follow the judgment of his conscience um, is ignorance or error judgment. It's not imputable to that nature. It does not cease to be evil in that case. It still, still is wrong. Even if it's not a fault for it, it's still wrong. It is not perfect, of course. It's not a work in the Supreme Court. It might not be an evil act in that case, but it still is something that has to say. It's still a problem. So it's better to be correct. It's not going to help No doubt. As the court will justify the error of conscience, we should reflect on the word of the song. Who can discern all my errors, clear me from my hidden faults? There are faults you fail to see, but nevertheless, they are made false because we refuse to walk with the law. Now, another, another topic. Conscience and the ultimate copy of judgment. Compromise the dignity, but it's humbly ignorant. So I said, my fault for being wrong. This is to say, when a man is really concerned with seeking what's true, and comes gradually become all blind because it has to be said. Jesus alludes to the danger of conscience being deformed and more as the eyes come out of the body. So if your eyes are sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. Light is darkness, how great the darkness. So again, someone who's making a mistake, they do the best they can with their role. Somebody who doesn't care, they have to form a constant in their heart with themselves and be more far away. Number 64. These words of our Lord also represent a call to our conscience to make it well made. To make the opposite of our conscience of continuous conversion to what's true, what's good. In the same vein, St. Paul exhorts us not to be conformed to the mentality of this world, be transformed in the other mind. It is the heart of the Lord, the love of what is good, is really the source of the true judgments of conscience. When my heart wants to call God, I love God and I want to go to heaven. That's when my conscience is going to do the right thing. If my heart is conformed to myself, or to what's socially acceptable, or to what I would do, or to pleasing my parents, or to the like, I'm going to make this kind of fall apart. In order to prove the love of God, what is good, example, and perfect, Knowledge of God's law in general is necessary but not sufficient. It's a good start, but not enough. But a central sort of nationality of man, the true good. Don't have to know what's good, you have to want. It's not enough to simply say, I have to, the commandments of the commandments, and I have to want to follow the commandments. I have to want to follow Christ. I have to want to 
a little national care rather than that way making a good person. Right? The devil knows the balance very well. The devil knows exactly what uh, what's right or wrong. That was the us confused about what's right or wrong we are. Doesn't help. <laughs> it's necessary, not sufficient. <laughs> Such a calm naturality, such a union, is rooted in and develops through the virtuous attitude that makes a living inside. Prudence and other cardinal virtues, temperance, justice, and fortitude, even before these are the virtues of faith and charity. This is the meaning of Jesus saying, He who does what is true comes to life. Christians have a great help of the formation of the conscience and the church can have steward. As the council affirms, inform the conscience of Christian faith, but must give careful attention to the sacred and certainty to the church. The Catholic Church is by the will of God the teacher of truth. Her choice to announce is authentically that truth which is Christ. At the same time, her authority is to declare the firm principles of the world order, trying to keep nature itself. So, in other words, one way to have no that's right wrong. They have the church. Scriptures to guide them. If I'm going to say, okay, the church says I'm right and wrong, I'm not being honest. I'm not being for my heart right. It follows, therefore, so the church is going to help me know God and be conform to Him. It follows, therefore, that the authority of the church, when she pronounces on all questions, the fourth is always wrong, the first second is always wrong, but the light, it no longer undermines the freedom of confidence of Christians. Right, the church charge that we give the time is full. That is what the church says, I'm not really free. This is just like, I'm, I'm the attitude of a child. You know, the church that the guy who too is true toward God himself. And so they follow the definitive truth of what we taught by Christ. I am more free among myself than able to live my life in the This is not only because freedom of conscience is never freedom from the truth, no only freedom in the truth. But also because the Magisterium sure does not bring the conscience truths which are extraneous to it. Rather, it brings to light the truths that are already to possess. Because it's connected back in another way. This connection helps to know God. Developing that from the starting point, the more lack of faith. The church puts herself always only in the service of conscience. Helping us avoid being tossed to and from every way of God proposed by human deceit. I'm not going to swerve away from the truth of what's good for them. Heaven itself, we were made to God, we God. Rather, special and difficult questions retain the truth, certainty, the Bible is true. Because we're made for God, because God has given us the, the, tr- the church to pass in the way, to follow the church, and when it's away from this stuff, we're away from our own nature, away from what's good for us, but we'll perfect. Complete, make it possible, will to listen and to the Bible. Please don't truth. <laughs> Questions? Making sense? Very quiet, really. <laughs> Number 65. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Galatians chapter 5. The high concern for freedom in our own name. Am I truly free? Am I me? Am I me? Did I do my way? In the many students of the behavioral sciences and law of thought sciences, did I have a repentant and opposite nature? That was an act. To rightly point out that freedom is not only the choice for a moral action, it's also the next choice to think about itself. The setting of one's own life or against God. Or against true truth, or against, sorry, against the good, or against true or against God. Emphasis has been placed on importance or a choice of shape for some type of life. It has served as balance to these other particular everyday choices to be situated and allowed to that. So again, yeah, focus on what's true is going to be the truth of what's false. But it's true that if I choose to stand for virtue, well, I'm choosing this particular thing in front of me. I'm also making myself a dirt bad person. 
I'm changing myself by the choice. But when I choose to do good things, I become a good person. When I choose to do bad things, I become a bad person. And there are some points which are so, are so ornamental, they kind of overall those things. And the matter of daily choices, what my socks I wear, how much I eat, the amount of change, it, they'll, they'll reflect that. So the, the other the choice I made ultimately was to follow God. Uh, the little things I do in my life. However, some of us are better. And opposed to the radical tradition of relationship between the person acts. They speak of a fundamental freedom even deeper or different from freedom of choice, which has to be considered the human act of the morally correctly understood element, the idea. According to these authors, the hero of moral life is really the fundamental option. That of the fundamental freedom that a person makes in the full self determination, thought through a specific and conscious decision on the level of reflection, but a transcendental and atheistic way. Particular actors, both of this option, would constitute only part of what ever definitive attempts to give expression, only be it signs or symptoms. In a certain way, this is a kind of natural of reflection of certain prospects, where a prospect and certain prospects will say that once I choose for Jesus Christ, I'm always his. You've heard that word? So this is the same thing from the point of view of philosophy. This is my fundamental love, my fundamental freedom. So the deepest fundament of myself, the deepest root of myself, the part of myself, I have chosen for God. And therefore, the fact that I steal and she lie and she eat and fill the light, that fundamentally is still for God. A particular action can't change that because that's just a particular action. My deepest choice, that's what matters. You could argue that Catholics do that too because we have a condition so they think they can do whatever the hell they want. And certainly, if they treat that way, yes, yeah. that definitely is. <laughs> Um, but yes, it's fundamental option for the same thing as that. Particular acts which flow from this option, only a partial and never fit attempt to expression, only these signs of symptoms of it. So the fact that I'm trying to do any good, that kind of shows what my option is, my choice ultimately, but can't change it, because those are just particular expression of that memory. The immediate objects of this attack are the act of good, of course, the freedom of the person to be expressed as an adult, but in particular, or categorical ones. The immediate attempt to notice that because of these goods are only part of nature, you can never determine the freedom of the man the person is of You thus only by bringing that about in order to do so that the man is able to express his own fundamental options. So whatever good I have in front of me, it's never the ultimate good of my life. And therefore, because I'm only partial, it's only God and the ultimate good of the same. You choose this or that thing, because it's only partial good, you can never change my own wash. So in other words, but bluntly, yes, I chose for God, and therefore it's to choose to steal or beat somebody up, it's only a partial good. If you do those things, it's never going to be right from God. Uh, what the Lord says, but that's kind of all. It's it. Put it in words to sound, it sounds very smart. You break it down into one syllable word, it sounds very dumb. A distinction in S comes to be produced between fundamental option and deliberate choices of a concrete kind of behavior. In some authors, this division has to become separation. When they express one of the evil, the transcendental problem of the law. So they would say, instead so the evil, they would say, these particular actions, so individual actions, you know, stealing, lying, cheating, that's what they're buying wrong, but not really. what they would say. Uh. <laughs> 
Those are the words concerning my relationship with self, others, and the material world. So it's a bad thing to do, but not, or it's a, it's a wrong thing to do, but not a evil thing. The fact that I stole, cheated, lied, wrong, but not evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the purest in, in the human action, the purest destruction of the world's realm. On the one hand, there is the order of evil, dependent upon the will. On the other hand, some kinds of behavior, does she morally right or wrong only on the basis of the technical calculation of course to the pure order of the good which is result in the action? So, the way I judge between those good or bad, I judge between the results, goes between the, what was beforehand, and if I say proportionally, good things happen, therefore it's okay to do. So, yes, I stole, but in the long run, there's a good thing. Therefore, it's okay. That's kind of a lot, lot less real to talk about people or physical goods, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a question, and normally, honestly, normally it happens when we deal with sexual sphere of marriage. So, I'm really going to find this nice. Contraception, the real good I marry, homosexuality. It's normally going to find this discussion. I mean, it sounds very smart, it sounds very clever. It's not. They're just trying to justify what they want. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> and they use big words and fantasy words and kind of make these guys go this over. You know, it sounds good to me. That's what you said. It's <laughs> this push up on a common kind of behavior, even once we've chosen. So I, I buy a store or didn't buy a store. It's merely a physical process, not a true human act. Because that's a, it's not a fundamental change, it's something that happened when they did. The inclusion of this eventually leads to the ultimate moral assessment that person's reserve is a fundamental option. Presenting the whole part of this choice of interaction to call it that kind of behavior. So, in other words, how does that sound familiar? Yes, I lie or I slept around, but I'm a good person because I like right and love I looked up, and therefore the person, even though I slept around and cheated a lot and so. You heard that word? And the one, they, this one uses this word, but they've been prompted and fooled by this sort of thing. So there is no doubt the Christian moral teaching, even as the Guru's knowledge is the importance of fundamental choice. Which qualifies the moral life and made us feel the life of God. But so we do need to choose right and forward. So we didn't say, I want to hold up forever. That's important. That doesn't mean that my actions are not important. It's a question of the faith, the obedience of faith. Which imagines a total and free self commitment to God, offering a submission and life and will to God as he reveals it. This faith that works through love comes to the core of man from his heart. Where it's called the fruit of the works. The Ten Commandments one finds in the introduction of the various commandments in the basic laws. I am the Lord of God. It's by impressing upon the numerous and varied prescriptions that moral meaning, the morality of the covenant is aspect of completeness and the profundity. Israel's covenant is such a man about the fundamental man. Do I obey God and follow God and love God? Rather, the new covenant is also about a similar way, the fundamental call, which is Christ to follow him. This has to be on a man for which you prefer to come follow me. To this call, the disciple must respond with a radical decision of choice. The gospel parable is the treasure of the program of Christ, which one sells all of his possessions. Our eloquent and effective and limited is the radical initial financial position and the kingdom of God. The radical nature of the decision to follow Christ is adequately expressed in his own words. That would save his life and lose it, or lose his life, my sake of the apostles will save it. Jesus called to come to follow me, or the greatest possible expansion of human freedom. But the same that this is to his true obligation of the acts of faith decisions, to be described as well as under option. We find a similar application of human freedom in the words of St. Paul. 
you are called from the brothers. The apostle put the ads a great warning. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. So he has chosen to go for Christ, and I'll make an excuse to say, hey, I don't want that. The word happens in early words. Freedom of Christ says free. And it was when I got baptized and I had to live that way. I lived up, they had freedom by your life. Stand fast, therefore, it's not supposed to be again to be able to Paul encourages us to be watchful because freedom is always better than my sleep. It's precisely the case when the fact of faith is fundamental option comes separated from the choice of actions in the strong dimension of all. So if we look at the example of Christianity, where people will say, you know, is it faith or is it action? Is it, is it uh, was it like Christ and after the Christ or is it like I chose Paul? The answer is both. Mm-hmm. It's faith and works. You can't get everyone one out of one. In the same way, in the moral life, I have to fundamentally choose to hold up. Totally true. But I can't divorce that and live that out of my life. If I try, I have to live for God. It's, it's don't be fooled with the fact there is some truth here, and there is this erroneous presentation. And it sounds really good, but it can be confusing. Because the thing is that both things can be both. Individual actions in the life of God, they also must decide to follow and trust in the walk in These tendencies are therefore contrary to teaching the scripture itself, which sees the fundamental option of the issue of freedom, and links that choice without their particular values. By fundamental choice, man is capable of giving his life direction or progressing from grace for his end, or God's call. But this path is actually exercised a particular choice. What makes this live out of real is because our actions to the life. Without this, it's not real. To which man really conforms up to God's goodness of the law. It thus needs to be stated that so called fundamental option is that which is distinct from a general tension and I have determined in such a way that freedom is obligated, is always brought into play through confidence and free decisions. Precisely for this reason is where both man engages his freedom as conscious. The conscious decision is contrary to the Lord's morally great matter. Because I have exercised this in my real life, when I choose against God in a serious way, I have chosen a different option. So, yes, there's a the fundamental decision to follow God. If I reject God in the right today, I have chosen to follow God. I can't say I'm going to follow God if I'm actually follow God. I can't say I belong to God if I reject Him. In order to follow God, I have to actually live and, and, and follow Him. As any human being, I think it was the end of the relationship. And yes, I love my parents, but I'm going to beat them up in the next room. Yes, I love my wife, but I'm going to cheat on them. Well, so you've done those things, you've got to stop loving your wife and stop loving your parents. <laughs> So you can't say you're choosing God to have a without your life. To separate this option from common kinds of behavior is to contradict the integrity of the personal unity of, of the agent, his body, and the soul. The body and the soul is the body separate or separate. Fundamental option is understood without explicit consideration of potentiality that puts into effect the way which it expresses what the words was happening in your life. The choice that make for true. Does not do justice to the rationality of the imminent and as acting each of his liberal decisions. What I choose the truth really does express and help me to do those who are done wrong. What I choose really forms myself, forms the world, changes who I am. Because I'm, 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 I'm a thin I'm a person. In point of fact, the morality of human acts is not deduced only from one's intention, what we can do, orientation or option. If there's intention of what they think of violent content or intention, of course, the of the reason for life. 
Just because I have a good reason for doing something, what if it's a result, it's going to make it okay. The road tells pain with it. <laughs> doing bad things for the right, for, for the right reason to show bad things. Don't give up around it, whether it's good or bad, or whether it's close or not. It cannot be made without taking into consideration whether a deliberate choice or a certain kind of behavior do this or not. The conformity of the dignity of a particular location is universal. I can only say what I intend with this, what am I choosing fundamentally, but is this action of stealing good or bad? I can't simply say what I intend to do by the stealing, so the stealing good or bad. Have to be both. Every choice always implies a reference to deliberate will, the good of the evil, you can't have an actual law. As goes to be pursued to be avoided. In the case of the positive moral precepts, thou shalt do this, thou shalt do this. <laughs> Prudence always has a task of verifying only that it can be applied in a particular situation. For example, there are other duties that may be more important or urgent. So I'm always supposed to pray. Should I go to the mass today? <laughs> Maybe an analyst drive or someone's dying, and I should skip the mass and make sure the person's dying. It's my duty to that. An analyst drive or just to care the person dying. Not to say, sorry, but hold it, I'm going to go pray today. <laughs> the data of all precepts was prohibiting certain common actions, or kinds of behavior, and the evil, that would allow for any exception. They don't leave any room in any acceptable moral what they or creativity of any public choice whatsoever. Thou shalt not kill. Don't do this. There's no exception to that. Once the moral species of an action prohibited by universal law is completely recognized, the only morally good act of obeying the moral law, therefore, any of the actual is different ways. Here, an important consideration must be added. According to the logical position as mentioned above, <laughs> The document itself is adding historical considerations. Well, because the term pastoral is different things, right? So there's pastoral, there's pastoral. So the term pastoral can be used in a false word or true way. Just like moral good can be used in many different ways, but a lot of many ways. So, yes. Sounds like an excuse, but anyway. Go ahead. Your historical consideration. Well, it's, it's, the, it's human language that is confusing. And human language means many different ways. Because if you think kind of what matters, not the actual sounds being used. <laughs> so, according to the logic of the positions mentioned above, an individual could, by virtue of fundamental option, remain faithful to God independently of whether or not service or certain acts are in conformity with specific moral ones or rules. By virtue of this option for charity, the individual could continue to be morally good. Zavira and God's grace and salvation, even if certain individual acts gave her completely made contrary to God's commandments, support by the church. So, according to this false thing, they could say, I'm a loving, therefore I can sin boldly. In point of fact, and it is not some tradition held only by being unfaithful upon the metal option, or by his being a priest of to God. But then, if you have committed the moral sin, he offends God as the giver of the law, and as a result, becomes guilty of the law the entire law. See the book of James, chapter 2. He be a person of faith, who is sanctified grace, charity, and compliance. As the Catholic teaches, the grace of the must receive his loss only by apostasy, which faith itself is lost, plus many other moral sin. In other words, I can, I can say I love God, I believe in God, I trust God. But if I'm um, stealing, cheating, lying, killing, I still can go. It's good? Make sense? Questions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop there. Who's there? Who's there? I didn't have any oh, no. <laughs> We're on 69. Okay. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the goodness to us. Help us to secure well to follow your commands all things. Make us truly good, deep in our hearts and life, eh? Help us to follow you in our daily lives. All that we say and do be for your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be. We're all about that and plan. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.